Last year, I made a video explaining how much you can make as a software engineer in the UK. That video did fairly well. I got quite a lot of comments from people, from people sharing their own experiences. So I thought I'd make an updated video for 2025 because quite a lot has changed in the past year, be it with the economy and the rise in AI tools. So I'm going to go over what the market is like at the moment, how much you can earn going from a junior onto mid-level onto a senior engineer. And finally, I'll just share my thoughts on what I think software engineering will look like in the future. So without further ado, let's get into the video. So first of all, who am I? I'm Chris Patton. I'm a software engineer. I've been doing it for like 15 years now. Uh, so I've got a pretty good understanding of like how the industry works and where I kind of see it heading. But just before I start with the figures, let's jump into, you know, just sort of like how the market is right now. So in the 12 months leading up to my last video, there had been quite a lot of layoffs. There were 264,000 from nearly 1,200 different companies. Last year, there weren't as many, which is good. There were 150,000 from 550 companies, but that, but that number is still much, much higher than it was three or four years ago. These figures are from layoffs.fyi. And even though that site only tends to track bigger companies, I think it is still a fairly good indicator. And yeah, some companies over high and then and then let people go afterwards. But I think generally speaking, if there are still quite a lot of layoffs, it's a bad sign. In terms of hiring, itjobswatch.co.uk is a site in the UK which tracks market trends. And they reported that in the last six months, there were 5,700 adverts placed for software engineers, which sounds like a fairly decent amount. But if you compare that figure to the same period 12 months prior, then that figure was actually 8,400. And if you go back a further 12 months, that figure was 12,700. So that's a pretty shocking decrease, really. To put it into simple terms, there's less than half of the jobs that there were two years ago. Okay, finally on to Hacker News. So at the start of each month, there are two threads posted on Hacker News. One is called Who Who is Hiring, where companies can just post positions that they're looking to fill. And the other is called Who Wants to Be Hired, where anyone who is looking for a job can just post their CV. Um, and I have a script which will fetch the number of comments on each of these threads and then put it on a graph. And as you can see, this is the chart which I showed in my video last year. Um, and you can see that the red line, which is the number of people wanting to be hired, has outpaced the blue line, which is the number of companies posting jobs. And if I update this chart up to February 2025, you can see that that has continued. And just to put that into perspective, since 2014, the number of jobs has always been higher than, than the number of people looking for them. But now that's just flipped. And I really don't see that going back to how it was anytime soon. And yeah, you, you could you could argue that, that this isn't very conclusive because it is mainly just startups based on Hacker News, but kind of similar with the layoffs. I just think this is a good like indicator of the market as a whole. Okay, so we've now worked out that there's less jobs, which isn't Great. Now let's go on to some figures to see, to see how much you can earn. So I basically went through all of the big job sites in the UK and just took an average of their figures. So, so that's sites like Indeed, Read, Glassdoor. Okay, so for a junior role, I took averages from Indeed, Glassdoor and IT Jobs Watch. And it worked out at around 34k, which sounds about right. From a lot of people, I've heard that most vacancies are advertising in between 30 and 35. Mid-level is 48.7K, senior is 64.1. I think really, as a senior, you should be earning at least 50K. If you're not, then something has gone quite seriously wrong there. And finally, if you make it to a lead, you can be looking at around 80K, potentially like a little bit higher. So those numbers sound about right. It's actually similar to the numbers we saw last year. I guess some positive news is companies are still willing to pay similar to what they were last year. It's just the case of there are less jobs now. I think all in all, it's still a pretty good career. It's just harder to kind of get your foot like in the door. So that kind of begs the question, why are there less jobs now? I think, first of all, as I mentioned at the start of this video, the economy isn't that good sort of right now. 
inflation is still fairly high, which certainly doesn't help. But I think the number one factor is just that AI tools have become really good now. I've been using the O3 Mini model by OpenAI and it is pretty good. Like it can handle like almost anything. Um, it's certainly much better than it was this time last year. And yeah, like if it does make a mistake, it can kind of work out where it went wrong too. So yeah, like if it can outperform me, then I like to think it can probably outperform most sort of like juniors. Um, and it kind of makes sense. Like why do you hire someone on £35,000 when you can get the same work done faster and like a thousand times cheaper? And I think the only reason why I still have a job is just simply because these models aren't that good at sort of bigger picture stuff yet like like architecture work and that is the sort of work which you do which you do once you get sort of like higher up the career ladder um but yeah i think that that will soon not be the case i think by this time next year maybe um so yes yeah, so i think like a lot of companies are now rethinking like how they scale so rather than you know normally if you want to scale just hire hire more people but now i think they're kind of thinking let's not hire but let's try and get more out of the engineers which we have got. I do feel sorry for anyone looking for their first job because it's going to be pretty tough. But I would say one thing that we're probably going to also start to see a shift in how companies hire. So previously, you'd you'd you know, normally hire sort of based on like experience. But now I do think we're going to see people looking more just how like productive you can be. Like if you can demonstrate that you're able to get like a lot of work done very quickly, then I think you do stand a good chance. So that brings me to the end of this video. If you did enjoy it or found it interesting, please do leave a like and consider subscribing. Um, thanks again for watching and see you in the next one.